First pitch of the ball game. Called the strike on the inside half. Brunson hitting 309, three home runs and 18 batted in. One ball and one strike. Brunson's three home runs, that's actually second highest on the team. We see Curtis Byrne has five home runs. TCU has not hit a ton of home runs this year. Especially on the road, they've had a little bit of a power outage. Just one home run away from home this season. I beg your pardon, two home runs in either road or neutral site games. Three balls and a strike after Garula got ahead. Perry Costello calls the balls and strikes today. Clay Park, Jeff Spisak, and Justin Robinson, the field umpires. That's down and in. Lead off walk to begin the ball game. Now defensively behind Brendan Garula. Cincinnati continues to shake it up a little bit. Going with some different lineup combinations. The designated hitter, Logan Maxwell. Garul did a good job getting ahead. Went to the off speed as he often does. You're going to see a good pitch mix out of him between fastball, curveball, and changeup. But we're just losing those to the glove side. See if the visual switch of a lefty will help him out here. And that lefty is Logan Maxwell, takes a called strike up and in. Maxwell has reached base in 27 consecutive games going back to last year. 374 batting average coming into this game. Top 10 in the Big 12. Nothing in two. Now Maxwell is hitless over the last two games. Last Saturday against Houston and then the midweek against UT Arlington. That was the first midweek loss for TCU this year. High chopper to second. Brooks only plays to first. First out for Cincinnati. For Cincinnati this year, TCU a little bit more set in terms of who's going to play where on any given day. A man in scoring position on the fielder's choice for Maxwell. And Anthony Silva takes a strike. What's it like, Zach, when Garula gets ahead early, then walks the next, you know, four pitches, leads to the walk, but then gets that ground ball out? What's that like to navigate those early game emotions? That's just confidence. You never want to walk the first guy. On a line to right, sending Hegeman back. He's got it. Tagging it second. Brunson on his way to third. Silva hit that one well, 100 off the bat, but Garula's got his second out. But... You walk the first guy, you're not going to be happy with yourself. And you talked about being able to regulate your emotions. That's huge. And the fact that he went right back, reset, I think changing the focal point, meaning going from a right-handed hitter in there to a left-handed, helped him out. He was able to land that breaker and then got a nice weak contact for that fielder's choice. And that does a lot for the confidence. So now man at third with two out. And Garula has to get through Curtis Byrne. Takes down and in, 259, five home runs and 26 batted in for Byrne, senior out of St. Louis. Another staple of the lineup. We'll see Byrne and Bowen flip between catcher and first base. They like rotate back and forth, so neither of them too much work on the knees. Weekly hit, shallow right center, long way to go. Hegeman lays out and makes the grab. Oh, dandy, what a play. Saves a run. At Peyton Tolley has only allowed two balls in play on fastballs to left-handed hitters all year. That's how hard he is to hit, especially left-handed hitters. So as you said, Coach Bischel stacks the lineup with righties and see if they can get to him after two great outings. Fastball misses outside to Brooks. Second year with Cincinnati for Loudon Brooks after transferring from Texas Tech and he's hitting 376. He's really been getting into his groove offensively. Last year we saw hot and cold at the plate, great things on defense, does little things right, and this year he's really taken that next step as an offensive player as well. 
One ball and two strikes. Tolley going to that slider to get ahead. Tolley comes in third in the Big 12 in opponent batting average. Fourth in innings pitched. First in strikeouts. Brooks punches this out to right center, and Brunson tracks it down. One up and one down. Behind Tolley defensively today for TCU. Showed the lineup at the start of the broadcast, but it is Basir in left, Brunson in center, Myers in right. More walks than strikeouts, which you always love to see. Across had an eight game hitting streak snapped on Saturday against Baylor. He has been a little bit quiet in Big 12 games, hitting just 222 in conference. A tough assignment today against Peyton Tolley. Tolley is on the Golden Spikes Award watch list. He is a preseason All-American. He was a finalist for the John Olrue Two-Way Player of the Year last year at Wichita State. Nasty stuff. He really swung it well last year, hit over 300 with 12 home runs. This year has not been hitting as much. I think TCU still is going to want to mix him in on the offense, but seems like ever since he's hit less, he's pitched better, and I think that's just part of being a two-way player. It's really, really hard to focus on both. The one-two, Cross takes it just off the plate. Byrne was ready to throw it around. Good frame job by Byrne. You, you typically steal that. It's probably a bit out, but again, really good frame. Usually you get that. Cross putting up a good at bat here. Something you don't see a ton, Tolley, mainly a two-pitch pitcher. You normally see starters got three or four pitcher, pitches, but that just speaks to how good Tolley's two pitches are. He doesn't need anything more than that big fastball and that slider. Counts full. Curious if moving forward into pro ball, if he has a changeup that he's pocketed that he would mix in, or if teams would want to give him a cutter or something else, because typically starters are, you're going to profile more as a reliever with two pitches. Got him. First punch out for the Big 12's best, Peyton Tolley. Doing what he does, coming right at you. 92 miles an hour on that fastball. Now, as I said, 92, that might not sound crazy, but looking at some of the numbers here, Tolley's six foot six. He gets seven foot six inches of extension. So he strides really far down that mound and he makes that fastball play up. So 92 is probably looking more like 94, 95, and that's why his fastball has been so effective this year, getting on guys quicker than they think. That one 93 to Josh Cross, but it missed. So two up and two down for Tolley, but now has to deal with the Bearcats' hottest hitter. Josh Cross, 302, 11 home runs, 44 batted in. Those 44 runs batted in, fourth in the country. And now a discussion of home plate. Josh Cross got into a little bit with Perry Costello, and now Jordan Bischel out of the dugout to defend his first baseman. Not sure what that was about, but it was very spirited, to say the least. Not sure if he was telling him to get back in the box, if he was taking his time with the, the hitter clock, but I'm not sure. Hit a ton out to center field. Brunson in front of the warning track has got it. And that retires the side. And hey, we've gone a few weeks. It wasn't working with Logue as the starter. Let's go for Garula and then bring Logan after him. And it paid off last weekend against Baylor and started off well today. The idea of an opener, it's something that's gained traction in recent years. It makes sense if starters struggle early on, sometimes settling in, you put a guy that's been coming out of the bullpen, give you a sure first or second inning, because it's hard to come back after a big inning early on. One ball and one strike on Jack Basir, leading off the top of the second inning. Basir hitting 258.
Pepperdine transfer. He was a good one with Pepperdine. Spent just one year out there, but West Coast Conference second team selection as well as the all-conference freshman team. Hit 345 with five home runs. On the ground left side, nice diving play. Carrington cross for out number one. The cross connection, cross to cross. Some great glove work by the Bearcats so far. Now Hageman in the outfield to end last inning, and now Josh Cross helping out Carrington Cross at the back end here. Good play all around. Fantastic play to have the wherewithal to stand up and fire it across, and Carrington Cross and Josh Hageman roommates. Maybe they'll be talking later about whose play was better, <laughs> whose might be higher on Sports Center top ten if they're, they're going to be on there. Who's the better Cross in general? That's a good debate right there. We could talk all day about that one. Good problem for the Bearcats to decide who's the better cross. Called strike one to Luke Boyers. This guy has crushed Big 12 pitching this year. Flies this out towards right center. Hegeman gets a great jump on it for the second out. Talked about Brunson leading off the game today, but Boyers hit 500 in that series against Houston as well. 0 for 1 today. Boyers has done a lot of good things in his career. It's been a real mainstay in this lineup. And hits the ball really hard out to right field, but Josh Hegman's played a lot of center field in the past. He can cover a lot of ground out there. Two outs for Bowen. Bowen, a freshman All-American last year, really took hold of that catcher spot in this TCU batting lineup. Big 12 freshman team, Big 12 honorable mention, and a freshman All-American hit 350. Had a grand slam against Dallas Baptist a year ago. Top 10 team. Down in the count, one and two. Rula mixing up his pitch mix here. Typically throws a lot of change-ups against right-handed hitters. Has been primarily fastball, curveball to start. Might go against TCU's scouting report a bit. Check swing on a ball in the dirt. He goes around, and Garula has his first punch out. Buried the breaking ball, and boom. Those long road trips, middle of March in, into April, those are always tough. But I'm sure you'd rather have that at that time than towards the end of the season when you're in the dog days of the season, right? The only road trip you want to be going on at the end of the year is to Omaha or a regional. Josh Hageman leads it off for the Bearcats, quickly down nothing and two after a 1-2-3 inning for Peyton Tolley. A Cincinnati 4-4 four four on that road trip against... Louisville, St. Louis, Baylor, Miami, Ohio. Hegeman gets rung up there for the second strikeout for Tolley. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Dots a slider after two fastballs right at you. That's why this guy is having the year that he is. That's just a great sequence, great location. Josh Hegeman doesn't strike out much either. On the ground towards short. Big hop for Silva. Two gone. Christian Mitchell grounding out. Hit it hard, 102 off the bat. Totally came right at him, 92 down the middle. Doing what he does. That's why he's pitched so deep into games, because he's just pitching with no fear, going right at guys, saying, my stuff is better than whatever you put in the box. And he's going to trust his defense behind him. And he's been going really deep into games as well. Cincinnati might be facing this for eight or nine innings today. Luke Sefcik batting now with two outs. Sefcik, one of Jordan Bischel's many weapons, hitting 328, 15 starts. So he's been in and out of the rotation, DHing today. He's played a lot of second base. This Bearcats offense, the real strength of the team. One through nine, they're tough to pitch to, but totally not struggling so far. Two and one. 
As Sepsik just falling victim to a crowded middle infield. And Christian Mitchell's played a lot of shortstop. Loudon Brooks now that he's hit safely in 12 in a row is not really giving up that spot. Carrington Cross has played exclusively third base this year, so that has alleviated a little bit of the log jam. But not a lot of at-bats to go around for the Cameron Gidrys and the Luke Sefsiks and players of that caliber. On the inside half, that is strike three. Peyton Tolley strikes out two more in the second. It's been right around the zone. I, I think that's the biggest thing with an opener is that you want guys out there who aren't going to walk batters early on. He did walk the first batter, but since then it's been smooth sailing for Brendan Garula. Really competitive at bats. And that's what you want. The offense always comes out with a lot of energy first time through the order. Walking guys just gives the other team a ton of energy. Up there for the third inning of work, facing Ryder Robinson leading off the top of the third. That one slipped. Ball one to the Utah native. Utah Gatorade Player of the Year last year. Second team high school All-American, Ryder Robinson. One of a few freshmen who have been mainstays in this TCU lineup. Something as a TCU fan, you love to see these freshmen coming up, making an impact early on. You know, know you're going to get at least three good years out of them. Well, like you said, Zach, earlier to begin the game when you lose a lot of production in the lineup, including a first round draft pick and three guys who hit 300 or better, you need some of those younger guys to step up. When you're a TCU, it's either going to be young guys or you can hit the portal. Obviously, they make the College World Series last year. There's going to be plenty of guys like your Peyton Tolleys who would love to come play for TCU. Three balls and one strike. Garula falling behind to the leadoff man here in the third. The slider gets him back ahead. 3-0 breaking ball. That's that's Brendan Garula in a nutshell right there. He's going to mix your sequences. He's going to throw curveballs and fastball counts. He's going to throw fastballs and curveball counts. That's what makes him effective with. He works all the way back. Back-to-back -back sliders to punch out Robinson. Big time from Brendan Garula. Trust his bread and butter there. That. Big curveball. Ryder Robinson expecting a fastball in that count. That's now back-to-back -back strikeouts for Garula going back to last inning. Brings in Sam Myers, number nine man in the order. Been hitting really well for a nine hitter, 290 coming into this game. That one kicks off the mound and into center. First hit for either team goes to Sam Myers. Another freshman at the bottom of the order, along with Ryder Robinson. 16 starts, 22 games. Does a really nice job there. Doesn't try to do too much. Right back up the middle. Good baseball. Nine hole acting as a leadoff right there. That's the first hit for Myers since March 23rd against Oklahoma State. Didn't factor into the Houston series very much. He's aboard with one out in the third inning. Back to the top of the order for Brunson. So Brunson with that walk to lead off the game has now reached safely in 14 consecutive games. One time Big 12 newcomer of the week. Continuing our train of freshmen, we've got 8-9-1. And from my vantage point, these guys do not look like freshmen. Taking some really good at-bats. Check over at first again. Myers one of three in swipes this year, but TCU really runs. I love to get on and go. Over the last decade, they're one of the nation's best at stealing bases. 
How much as a pitcher now, Zach, does that impact you on the mound if you're Garula? It's definitely something that you got to keep in the back of your mind. You hope that you're a guy that's quick to the plate, trust your catcher, and don't have to worry about it a ton. But it definitely factors in. And if there's anything else in your mind as a pitcher, that's just. Well, he gets the ground ball. Second for one, throw to first, and that is a double play. So Garula bears down and gets the twin killing. Took out Brun. A lot of great things for this program. Been there as the pitching coach for a long time. His third season as the head man. Obviously took them to that College World Series appearance last year. If you're a TCU fan, you got to love the trajectory he's got this program on. Started out as the pitching coach a few years ago and then took the reins. And TCU is always going to have pitching with Kirk Sarlos at the helm. It's been the offense the last few weeks that has plagued the Horn Frogs. They're trying to get that back on track. Scoreless through three innings today. But they have their ace on the bump. We've got two head coaches here with pitching backgrounds in Jordan Bischel and Kirk Sarlos. Always something to note. See a lot of catchers and position players as head coaches typically, but representing the pitchers like myself here. Jesse gets plunked. First blemish on the line of Peyton Tolley. So Hunter Jesse, the transfer from Indiana, who's been feasting on Big 12 pitching, draws the lefty-lefty start and gets hit. Hitting a guy when you're up in the count like that, maybe the most frustrating thing that can possibly happen as a pitcher, along with the blue pit. You feel like you got Jesse there, you got him down in the count, and you, you back up a slider. Some cold weather probably doesn't have as good of a grip on it. Up and away to Jones. Three-game hitting streak for Alec Jones, who's starting to find his footing in the box. Returning starting catcher from last year, but Josh Cross has also been getting some time behind the plate. You're not taking his bat out of the lineup. So Jones has played a little bit more sparingly this year, but starting to get a few more at-bats and take advantage of it. As you said, starting to heat up. His presence behind the plate is great. When I pitched to him last year, I always felt real comfortable. You know, just being a veteran guy as a catcher, you just know how to deal with younger pitchers really well. Not to say Josh Cross does, and I think he's done a really good job, but the impact of a fifth year behind the plate is very nice for a pitching staff. So the fact that he's starting to heat up at the plate just means he'll get more time behind the dish as well. Because as we know, if, you're, if you hit, you're going to be in the lineup. On the inside corner, had him backing away. Another thing with Tolley, he's not afraid to pitch inside. And any good pitcher, you cannot be afraid to pitch inside to, to buzz a guy, whatever you want to say, especially on a cold day like this. You establish that, get them thinking about it on the inner half, then you break off a slider. Went back inside, and Jones does just enough to stay alive. The thing I'm most impressed with so far with Tolley isn't even the stuff. It's just his relentless aggression, just going right at guys. And it's as advertised. He pitches deep into games for a reason, as I said. And he just has no fear out there. That's what Kirk Sarlos told us. We talked to him before the game, just that competitive nature. Never backs down, goes right at you. Something I'm sure he can appreciate. Off the hands, popped up. And an easy play for Boyers. Peyton Tolley, we've talked a lot about him. I mean, this guy has just been nasty the last couple of outings. 1-5-2 ERA in his last three starts. That's pretty good. <laughs> you don't say. Like, like I said, deep into games, going right at guys, big fastball, jumps out of the hand. As I touched on earlier, huge extension off the mound. He's 6'6", big imposing frame. And he strides so far down the mound that 92-93 looks like 94-96. And that allows him to sustain that velocity deep into the game. And really, he pitches like a closer. A lot of fastballs up in the zone, big and aggressive, but he's pitching like a closer for eight or nine innings. And there's not much that you'd want more than that if you're TCU. Dealing with Pearson for the first time. Nothing in one. Dalton Pearson hitting 211. Home run, 11 batted in. There's one knock on Peyton Tolley, and it's not even a knock on him because he can't control this. It's the run support that he gets. One of the lowest on the team in terms of run support per starts. 
Pearson brings it away on the bunt bid. That does seem to be the case a lot. And, you know, it's almost a thing like when you got a guy like that on the mound, your offense knows that he's going to go, probably not give up many runs. So maybe in the back of their mind, they're not thinking that they got to go score as many runs as if they got a spot starter or a week or a midweek starter out there. That seems to always kind of be the case. Tolley only getting 4.9 runs per game of support. Which for Peyton Tolley, about five runs per game is going to win you more games than not. But compared to the Luis Rodriguez's and some of the other guys that TCU will roll out there, that's one of the lowest on the team. I guess on a positive note, Josh Tolley, he doesn't have to spend a ton of time in the dugout. That's why he can stay in these games. He's not getting cold between innings if they're not putting up a bunch of runs. I know when I was out there in the dugout, as much as I want my team to score behind me, I'm just sitting on the bench, chopping at the bit to get back out there. And so far, he's been quick work. Misses high there, two and two. Pearson in his first season with Cincinnati. Coming over from Georgia State at 285 last year. The 2-2. Fly towards right, Myers, a couple steps towards the line. So after the hit batter to open up the inning, pop out, fly out, and now Tolley back to the top of the order to face Loudon Brooks for the second time. Loudon Brooks saw it well off of him, his last at bat. Hit it hard. See if he pitches him backwards at all, second time through the lineup, or if he's going to keep going right at guys with fastballs. I think I'm answering my own question. I think he's going to keep going right at you. Brooks showing bunt and takes the strike. Did go to that slider. Well, you mentioned it, Zach, you know, with the two pitch mix, it's not like there's that third pitch to incorporate. These batters have already seen fastball sliders. So, it's just more of the sequencing now, not necessarily what new to expect. Absolutely, especially as a right-handed hitter, you're not having to worry about a changeup going away from you. You just got to be on the fastball, but that is much easier said than done, as I've talked about the metrics, the release height, the extension. It's one of the best fastballs in college baseball for a reason, and again, there's a reason he throws it 70% plus of the time. Not many guys throw their fastball that much, and it's better be elite if you're throwing it that much. Hooked foul right off the Cincinnati dugout. That'll wake you up on a cold, chilly day. I'd usually be over there pounding dugout snacks right about now, so I probably would have dropped my granola bar. I was going to ask, where are you at snack-wise in this third inning? Uncrustable granola bar. Yes. <laughs> Got him. Reared back for a little extra on that one. Tolley punches out his fourth batter. And it's been a big reason why TCU has lost eight of the last 15 is the offense has scuffled a little bit lately and just one hit on the board today through three innings. We asked Kirk Sarlos about that early before the game today. Talked about their 13-0 start and then how the hitting, as you said, has dropped off a bit. And he attributed it to the depth and quality of pitching in the Big 12. One of the best conferences year after year after year and the pitching always very solid as we're seeing today. Garula back out there fourth inning. Something to note as longest outing of the year three and two thirds against Western Illinois. And Garula has done well to keep that trend for TCU. You hate it if you're a Horn Frogs fan. You love it if you're a Bearcat and Garula fan. You love it if you're a fan of left-handed pitchers. A day like today with Garula and Tolley duking it out. It is a little bit baffling for TCU because they lost a lot, but they return a lot. All those preseason All-Americans and returning All-Americans from last year. And it's not like their midweek and non-conference games, acts were cupcakes. UCLA, USC, Arizona, Arizona State, Dallas Baptist, UT Arlington twice, one of the best teams in the WAC. They've played a great schedule, and midweeks included. It's, as you said, sometimes you can go out there and play these cupcake teams middle of the year, but that's not going to get you better. That's not going to get you to the College World Series, and Kirk Sarlo certainly subscribes to that. And again, as you said, a lot of returners. You got Byrne, you got Maxwell, you got Silva. Bowen. Boyers. I mean, 
all these guys who are mainstays in the lineup last year, and Kirk Sarlis is just going to rely on them and trust that they're going to start to pick it up here. Chopper past the mound. Brooks charging in. Throws on the run, and that is out number one. Well, Maxwell bounces out to open up the fourth inning. Brooks makes a nice play coming in on it on the run. Saw Garula hopping off the mound. He likes to think he's an elite athlete. Oh, loves to talk about how he hit in high school, and although he's a lefty, I'm sure he would say he could go out and play shortstop. That's the level of confidence you get from Brendan Garula. That's why he goes out there with a fastball, not like Tolley's, but he goes out there and pitches with aggression, pitches with his fastball. You got to have confidence out there. He's through three and a third, scoreless. They were hoping for about 40 pitches. That was his 40th right there. Perry Costello claiming that hit the back foot for a moment. I thought he was going to say it bounced, never hit the foot. Came out in front of home plate, but made the call, and it's a hit batter putting Silva aboard. Hard to tell. Almost looked like he moved his right foot away from it. But nonetheless, on pitch 41, as you mentioned, that 40 pitch mark, pitch 41 is a hit batter. And now how long is the leash for Garula? Garula would love another double play like he got to end last inning. Burn takes low. Garula's done a good job with his fastball. I think he's transitioned to a lot more usage of a two-seam or kind of sinker versus a four-seam. And that's what's got him a lot of these ground balls. Here's another one over to Mitchell. But he bobbles it. That has been an issue for Christian Mitchell. Most errors in the Big 12. Makes one there. Can't draw it up better than that for a double play ball, but gets a little bit ahead of himself there. Starts kind of making the throw before he was in full possession of the ball. Easy to do, but tough break for Brendan Garula as he spun up a great double play ball. We've seen some defensive issues at shortstop for the Bearcats this year between Mitchell and Gidry, both of them fielding under 900. Sets up first and second and roped foul by Basir. How mentally taxing is that? Obviously, physically taxing as a pitcher, it forces you to make more throws to home plate, but how mentally taxing when, like you were just talking about, you get the ground ball, looking like you're gonna get out of the inning, and someone behind you makes an error. It's really frustrating, and that's where you got to just have that process over outcome kind of mentality. You got to say, you know what? I made the pitch. Anything that happens after this, you know, not going to be earned runs, at least, you know, in, in my mind. So, got to just keep focusing on making good pitches and can't dwell on it, but it's obviously frustrating. Off the outside edge, one and two on Basir. He was the victim of a great play defensively by Carrington Cross and Josh Cross to open up the second inning. Diving stop in the pick. But now trying to come through with two on and one out. Big time to capitalize here for TCU and Basir, obviously. Sports, baseball too, a lot of momentum. And a big air like that, you want to take advantage of it. job just to stay alive on that breaking ball. Garula again, mostly fastball curveball has not mixed in that change up much, especially to all these righties. A little surprised about that, but the curveball has been really good. He's been throwing it for a strike. He's able to bury it with two strikes. Lined out to left. Jesse started in, but recovers back. Big second out. 109 off the bat. Maybe there's the baseball gods helping out Brendan Garula after he gets the double play ball. They say, you know what? He's going to hit a 109. It's going to be right at somebody, though. That's big time for Brendan Garula. That was a pretty good pitch, too. Down and away. Just hooked it to left. Put a really good swing on it. 
put a good swing on it in the first at bat when Carrington Cross made that great play. He's seen it well today. That's a good point. Now here comes Jordan Bischel. So Garula passed that 40 pitch marker that the Bearcats were hoping for. Three and two third innings. And that's gonna be it. Pitching change on the way for Cincinnati. Garula gave him two on and two out. Pitch to Boyers, call the strike. So Boyers is the first to face the new pitcher, Seth Logue, hitting 371 in Big 12 games. Roped foul. Watch out. First pitch fastball, then goes little cutter on the inner half. Gets Boyers early on it. It's what you want out of a reliever going right at the first guy you face. 0-2 in the driver's seat. Boyers had a little bit of a down year last year. Hit 231, 46 starts. But he's been a mainstay, 40 or more starts every year. Big 12 honorable mention as a sophomore, hit 307 as a freshman. Slide down the left field line out of play. Warriors was one for four on Tuesday against UT Arlington. Should, should note it's his first at bat from the left side today. Switch hitter, switching over. One, two. Got him. Big punch up for Logue out of the pen. Still early April. Cincinnati weather will do that to you. It'll give you 75 in late February. <laughs> and you'll think, oh, it's going to be an early spring this year. And then you get snow in April or something. It is clockwork every year. It's not just Cincinnati. It happens everywhere. Two balls, no strikes on Carrington Cross leading off the bottom of the fourth inning. Bearcats escaped a pretty big jam in the top of the inning. Two on, one out. Combination of Garula and Logue kept TCU off the board. It's a great job by Garula to keep his composure after that air. And then for Seth Logue to come in, get a huge punch out, big time. Two and two. Peyton Tolley doing what he does. We talked about Garula down in the count, flipping in curveballs. Peyton Tolley down in the count. He says, here you go, here's fastballs. I believe I called him Josh Tolley earlier. I think, I think I'm thinking he pitches a little bit like Josh Hader. A little bit of that crossfire action, left-handed, kind of hides the ball and then comes at you with some noise. That's a really good comparison. He misses their ball four. That's my excuse, at least. <laughs> so he's walked a man, he's hit a man. Didn't miss by much. That's right there, but we've seen home plate umpire Perry Costello has not given it. We had one earlier where Byrne thought he stole a strike and he didn't give it to him. So again, not getting that spot. Been a good zone so far on both sides, in my opinion. Josh Cross takes strike one. I tell you, Jordan Bischel does us no favors putting Cross and Cross back to back in this lineup. Spelt differently, but both very important to this Bearcats offense. Keeps us on our toes up here, Anthony. Fly to right off the hands, and Myers has it sized up. First out of the fourth. So that was a very good comparison. Josh Hader for Peyton Tolley. Obviously different builds, but similar mechanics here. Yeah, for me, it, it's the angle of the shoulders. Hader kind of counter rotates more, but the way that he comes in with his shoulders kind of 
turns his right shoulder up towards the sky and then steps a little bit the way of first base. That's why we, we see only giving up a couple of hits to lefties all year. It is a tough at bat if you're a lefty. I think Hader has maybe a little bit of a higher leg kick. Definitely. And rotates, like you said earlier, kind of almost like a Louis Tiant is almost he's going towards second base, not the full Louis, but you know, similar cross the body in the way they step and stride towards home plate. Hegeman showing bunt a couple of times. One and one. Velocity holding in the low 90s, but as I said, the extension is going to make it play up. 91 effective velocity here says 93 because of that. Hegeman trying to get it down. He cannot. You've talked. You've talked a lot about that extension, Zach. It sounds like you're jealous from your playing days. Well, I certainly was a very different type of pitcher of Peyton Tolley. I'm, I'm not 6'5", 250. <laughs> I was right-handed, and I threw from a low slot with low extension. I was about the opposite. So actually, Kirk Sarlos, I got one more year of eligibility somewhere <laughs> hanging around. So I could pitch right after Tolley, and I could go roll you some 86-mile-an-hour sinkers because I think that I would actually be about the opposite of him. It would certainly be, <laughs> as you laugh away, it would certainly be a good dynamic. Different look for batters, that's for sure. Strike three on the outside corner. And Tolley just continues to rack him up. Number five. Right on the black, Josh. Peyton Tolley, there I go with Josh again, Josh Hader. Peyton Tolley continues, attack, 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 and then with two strikes, he's getting a little finer on the corners there. That's exactly what you want to do. Don't want to necessarily keep throwing him down the middle like he is earlier in the count, but right on the corner there. Two down for Mitchell, takes outside. Who would your MLB comp be? Hmm. What name are we going to start calling you? Somebody who was sidearm and not very good. <laughs> I think Brad Ziegler is the first name that comes to my mind for you. That's not bad. Cleveland fans, maybe Justin Masterson. Look at him. Look at him go off the mound. What a play. On the mound, see if he doesn't move great off the mound, but <laughs> looks like he does. What a play. First pitch swinging, top of the fifth inning. Bowen sends it to center. And Pearson handles that. One up and one down very quickly for Seth Logue. <laughs> well, keep in mind for Peyton Tolley, he was a two-way guy at Wichita State. Now, granted, it was more of the hitting that got the attention, not the fielding, but he would play first base every now and then with the Shockers. Played a little bit of first base against the Bearcats last year. I remember pitching to him, big imposing hitter in there. I think he scorched one off of me, about 105, 110 off the bat, right past my face, but ended up being an out. Yeah, Brad Ziegler didn't get the ground ball. No, he did not. Totally throws the ball hard, he hits the ball hard. I remember last year having played him at Wichita and Jack Caglione at Florida. I thought Tolley could be a little Jack Caglione too with the two-way. The bat hasn't panned out quite as much this year as on the mound, but. He's got a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. That's that's for sure. Seth Logue has come in and done well, just as he did against Baylor last weekend. Small sample size so far, but after three and two-thirds from Brendan Garula, Logue has come in and got out of a two-on and two-out jam and got the first man out here in this top of the fifth. But now behind three and one on Ryder Robinson. Slicing fly out to left. Jesse going back, and it's over his head. Robinson digging for two. And a one-out double for the freshman. Robinson is first at bat from the left side today. Puts a really nice swing on it. Pretty good fastball down in the zone. Just takes it the other way with authority. Another one of those freshmen for TCU that has done a really good job so far. It's his fifth double of the season. And now the question, 
for TCU. Can their offense come alive enough to push them in? Number nine man, Sam Myers. That was the first extra base hit of the day for either squad, I believe. No, just the second hit of the day. One hit for TCU, went to Myers in the third inning. And here's Myers again. A TCU is very good at sacrifices. Not necessarily bunts, but they'll hit a lot of sack flies and move guys over. So look for maybe a ground ball to the right side here at the very least for Myers to get that runner 90 feet away. Punched out to center. Pearson backing up a few steps. Ryder Robinson trying for third. Pearson's got a good arm, but just a little late holding the tag. And Robinson stays on there. Pretty good throw from Pearson. Robinson does a good job tagging up. He's got some speed. Probably a little closer than he thought it was going to be there with that throw. And almost over slides. We've seen that happen a number of times at home for the Bearcats here on both sides, whether it's the Bearcats or the opposing team. That new turf, they're oversliding a bit. Rocking it out to left. First pitch swinging. Jesse going back, and it's off the wall. TCU strikes first with a double for Brunson. The player we highlighted to start the game comes through in his third at bat. Gets a little cutter over the heart of the plate and does not miss it. That cutter didn't really cut. That's about as close to a home run as you can get without being a home run. Right off the top of the fence. run batted in for Brunson, who's now hit safely in five games in a row. For TCU. Fastball called the That's that little cutter, a couple miles an hour. Slow. And then back to the fastball there. But the thing with the cutter, when it's not cutting, it's just a slower fastball. It up too. Good pitch to hit. Brunson. Support for Tolley. One of the lowest on the team in terms of getting runs is one. Looks like it could be, but TCU would like some more. His own this year. Logue trying to limit the damage here in the fifth. Maxwell's always been a good hitter. Kirk Sarlo's telling us before the game it was just a matter of staying healthy. He's done it so far this year. He's looking more comfortable in the box here against the righty. Garula was really doing a good job lefty-lefty on him in his first two at-bats. Got him to make weak contact twice. Fielder's choice and the ground out to the second baseman. But he looks much more comfortable here against Seth Logue. Payoff pitch. Gets under it out to right. Shallow. Brooks also going out from second. Pearson coming in as well. But it is Hegeman to call everybody off. But TCU scores a run. RBI for Chase Bertoli in this fifth inning and beyond. I think they got to stick with their offensive identity, which is just to stick with looking for balls in certain parts of the zone, doing what they do, looking to drive the ball with authority, but then play some small ball when appropriate. But they haven't really had base runners to play any small ball, so they just got to keep looking to jump on the fastball. One walk, one hit batter. That has been it against Peyton Tolley today. 
Six, seven, eight for the Bearcats, starting with Luke Sefcik. Now Kirk Sarlos was right. We talked to him before the game. He really complimented the pitching in the Big 12. Of course, he's alluding to some of his own guys, Tolley being one of them. But even on the other side for Cincinnati, one run in five innings. It's been a good job of pitching for both teams today. There have been some really good pitchers duels, really good pitching performances in the Big 12 this season. You touched on the Bearcats pitchers. Most of their bad outings, I would say, have been free base related. They have good stuff. They don't typically get hit all around the park. It just has to do with here's a walk, here's a hit by pitch. And then we talked about some of the defensive woes. There's an error, and then there's a three-run home run, and th that breaks an inning open. When they're around the zone, I see them as being really competitive in the Big 12. Full count on Sefcik. Struck out looking in his first at bat. <laughs> Beg your pardon, now a full count on Sefcik after that one missed. You had a That's So Raven moment. You knew that was coming. <laughs> That's so Raven, that's one I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> that's up and away, and the leadoff man on for Cincinnati, trying to get that run back. That's his miss, cross-firing, fastball with life on it, just up and out, and the Bearcats hitters now Second time through, they're going to start to know that. Trying to work deeper counts, trying to do anything they can do to get on base. That's so Raven. Was that Nickelodeon or Disney? I want to say that was Disney. I think so too. And then, and then there was the spinoff, Corey in the House. That's right, Corey in the House. See, I was more of a Wizards of Waverly Place kind of guy. <laughs> Big Selena Gomez fan. Yeah, and then Drake and Josh on Nick. Oh, that of course. And Zoe 101. Classic. Most with a two, and SpongeBob, of course. Am I Drake or am I Josh in, in, in this duo? You're that weird guy in the band with the star tattoo. <laughs> or I'm uh, Craig and Eric. <laughs> <laughs> First pitch swinging, Jesse fouls it off to the left. Drake and Josh had that generational appeal. I remember, I remember my parents watching with me thinking it was funny. It was one of those rare kids shows where the parents liked it too. Any parent watching right now is saying, I thought we were done with those shows once <laughs> our kids went to college. Nope. Jesse has been tearing up Big 12 pitching. Hasn't started as much as he did when he was at Indiana, but he's been a good piece to mix and match in there in the lineup for Cincinnati. Leading the Bearcats Big 12 stats, 409 in conference. Not surprised. He, he started off kind of in, in the low 200s, and I've seen Jesse play for a long time, pitched against him at IU, went back pitching against him in high school, even, and he's always a guy who hits, so not surprised to see him turning it around. Gets jammed here, shallow fly to right, and Myers coming in. He was playing way back there, had a long way to go. Respecting the power, even on a cold day. It is chilly, but the wind is not howling. It certainly has a tendency to really whip around here at UC Baseball Stadium, but more or less pretty calm in terms of the wind. Slight breeze trickling to the right side, but not too much. One on, one out, and a check at first. Sefcik not a huge base stealing threat. Four of six this year. Good percentage, not a gaudy number in terms of overall swipes. The Bearcats, that's just part of their offensive identity. They're gonna run the entire lineup. They like guys who can run, who can do the little things, and they like to create chaos out there, whether it's on the base pass, whether it's bunting, taking the extra base. Oh, they're eighth in the country in total steals. 
we talked about TCU's uh, base running prowess, but looking at the stat sheet, UC's got them beat by quite a lot. Yeah, for TCU, it's been more of a historical number over the last decade for Cincinnati. Even going back to last year under Scott Guggins, the Bearcats ran a lot. And continuing that with Jordan Bischel this year. Another fly to right. Myers again coming in. Two outs. Myers has had a busy day. Can't say I'm surprised. Tolley, his MO, fastballs. He's going to have guys late on the fastball with how it jumps up. That velocity kind of creeps up on you. And Jordan Bischel stacking the lineup with right. He's not surprised that the right fielder, Myers, getting a lot of attention out there. Call the strike to Pearson. So if you're totally, Zach, this is exactly what you wanted to do. Your offense gives you a run. You know you don't get much run support to begin with. And after walking Sefcik, he's gone right at these next few hitters looking for this shutdown inning. He's not shying away at all as this game continues, just doing what he's been doing all game. Tons of fastballs. He'll mix in a slider when he has to. But coming into this game, he was at 72, 73% fastballs. It feels more than that. I feel like I can only remember... Of his 72 pitches, I feel like only 10 or 12 sliders. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like you said, with that extension as well, it really gets on you. It's a good fastball. It's a really, really good fastball. And that's the thing with a guy like this. That's the scouting report. He knows it. All the hitters know it. Everybody in the ballpark knows it. And he's just saying, here it is. That's another one. It's not like he's even like being cute, hitting the corners. He's coming right at guys, right over the heart of the plate. <laughs> Five strikeouts so far for Tolley. Up and in, runner goes, throw to second. Late. Stolen base for Sefcik. Nice job by Byrne. Fastball in. Receives it well. Athletic, but too quick on the base pass. Sefcik, another guy. Four of six, make it five of seven on stolen bases, but speed one through nine in this Bearcats lineup. Pearson stays alive. And that's one of those, Zach, even if Sefcik did get thrown out, you almost have a de facto leadoff hitter coming up next inning anyway with Pearson. Absolutely. Pearson started the year off in the one spot for the Bearcats. So as you said, it's nice to have a guy down in the nine hole with speed who can get on base like that. Cuts and misses there. Uh, Tolley bears down, works around the leadoff walk. Strikeout number six for number 1995 to win six in a row. Bunt bid is dropped foul off the bat of Anthony Silva, who was 0 for 1 with a hit by pitch today. That last line there we didn't get to. Every Big 12 school is represented on an opening day roster. Of course, opening day last Thursday around Major League Baseball for most teams. Some were postponed until Friday. That's a nice little note there. Every Big 12 school represented on opening day. Big 12 historically always filled with talent, so not surprised to see that, but that is a very fun fact. The SEC continues to reign supreme in a lot of different ways. The Big 12, very highly represented. The one two to Silva and he watches it for strike three. Second strikeout for Logue since coming in. Perfect pitch by Seth Logue. Great slider right on the corner. We see Jones set up on the outside. Throws it right to the glove.
Leadoff man gone. That brings in Curtis Byrne. Byrne was drafted out of high school as well. Has stuck it out with TCU after getting drafted by St. Louis back in 2019. 33rd round. Right center, Pearson coming in, and Hegeman cuts him off for the second out. Between Pearson and Hegeman, Zach, those two guys cover a lot of ground in the outfield. If you're Jordan Bischel or a pitcher on the Bearcats for that matter, you're going to feel pretty comfortable pitching on that outside part of the plate to a right-handed hitter because you know that, as you said, they're going to get to just about anything out there between the two of them. Yeah, as long as you keep it in the yard, you're going to feel pretty good about your chances. A two up and two down for Logue after allowing the run in the fifth. Masir takes ball one. There's that cutter again from Logue. 86, so four or five miles an hour slower than the fastball. Some slight glove side break. Lined up the middle and a base hit. First of the day for Jack Basir. As we said, he's been seeing it really well. Couple hard hit balls and no surprise that he's going to break through into the hit column today. Played for a really good program at Pepperdine. One that goes to some NCAA tournaments. Some of those West Coast schools that you don't hear a lot about otherwise. Cal State Fullerton, Pepperdine, Long Beach State. Yep. Although Long Beach State just made some noise with the NCAA tournament. But all very good baseball schools out on that West Coast. I wonder if you got a bit of recruiting connection with Coach Sarlos there. I know he's from California. Maybe still got some ties. Kirk played at Cal State Fullerton. All-American, Big West Pitcher of the Year. You're probably onto something there with some of those California ties. Now, if only he brought some of the California weather, that would have been nice. Coming into it, you would think a bit of an advantage for Cincinnati, maybe, with them being more used to these kinds of weather. TCU, I think. Usually spoiled with some nice hot weather. This ball's hit mile high out to right center. Plenty of time for Pearson to get over there. And that retires the side in the sixth inning. Nothing. Two starts carrying that right into today. Cincinnati was hoping that he couldn't keep doing it week after week, but so far he has looked every bit as good as his last two starts. Well, Loudon Brooks, maybe one of the better candidates to break up this rhythm. 12 game hitting streak entering the game. On a line to left and hangs up long enough for Basir to get over there. Well, nothing doing for Brooks. He was on that fastball, down and away. Pulled it to left, good contact, but day like today, not going anywhere. Last start for Peyton Tolley, eight and two thirds, two earned, 13 strikeouts. The start before that, a complete game shutout with 15 Ks against Oklahoma State. He's got six already today. This is shaping up, if things hold, to be the best start of the bunch. Credit to him on a cold day, too. Hasn't even thrown that slider much. Is that a pitch that you maybe struggled to get a grip on in this kind of condition? It's always easier to throw your off speed when it's warm and sticky out and, you know, have better feel for it. But to be fair, I, I didn't think he had bad feel for it. He was throwing it a little more early on, as we saw one just now. He's still dropping it in there, locating it. Just really hasn't needed it. One and two on Carrington Cross. So you'd rather throw the slider when it's warm and sticky and you don't have to use the sunscreen to help you out? Absolutely. Especially myself with my <laughs> red hair and fair skin. Nobody could say that me wearing sunscreen was an issue at all. 
full count. Totally kicking out that back leg there. I don't think he liked that landing. That's been his miss, just up and arm side a bit. They're not bad misses, but with the way his fastball kind of takes off and has life, we saw the walk to Sefcik in that last one there. And another one right there in that same spot. Cross tries to pump up the bench on the walk. That's all Cincinnati's been able to get today. Josh Cross, we talked about him at the start of the broadcast. He comes up trying to do some damage here. Man at first, one out in a one nothing game. What a year he's had. Huge spot for Josh Cross. We talked about him in the pregame. We built out some packages to show what he's done this year. Amongst the top of the ranks and a lot of major categories in the Big 12, he has been as advertised coming in after that freshman campaign at Eastern Michigan that he had last year. Josh Cross started his career at Toledo, did not play, and then went to Eastern Michigan for just one year. Mac freshman of the year, all-conference first team, freshman All-American. Jordan Bishel got the job, saw him play at Eastern Michigan, took him to Cincinnati, and that's his first hit, and the Bearcats' first hit today. Took him until the sixth inning, but Josh Cross breaks up the no-hit bid. Just a great piece of hitting. That ball, 91, off the plate. Just does a great job, takes it the other way. Like I said before, whether it's from the right side or the left side, this guy just hits. He's got a ton of power, 11 home runs, but not afraid to take what the pitcher gives him, like right there on the corner and just punches it the other way. He doesn't even strike out much for a power hitter. Only 15 punch outs to 12 walks this year. Uh, Josh Cross, obviously that was not a home run, but tied for first with Max Bellew of Texas. How about those Longhorns? Jalen Flores up there as well. Tommy O'Connor in the top five. Must be something in the air in Cincinnati and Austin. Must be. Either that or it's all the steak they're eating down in Austin. <laughs> and all the, all the chili they eat here in Cincinnati. I'm trying to think about Similarities between Austin and Cincinnati. I'm not thinking of many. No. Not that I can think of. The food certainly don't align. The weather doesn't align. The location does not align. Maybe there's a jet stream. Artsy, perhaps. Austin, real artsy. Cincinnati, you got a lot of artsy pockets downtown. That's all I can think of. I would not have thought of art when I thought of uh, Austin, Texas. Hegeman showing the bunt here. A couple of misses from Tolley. What do you make of this, Zach? Even with one out, Cincinnati trying to put the pressure on with the bunt. I love it. This is exactly what their offensive identity is. This is the first we've seen Tolley really labor at all down in the count. Offered at that one. And I imagine the ideal situation is Hegeman legs out a play at first base as well because, sure, you get second and third, but if this is a straight sacrifice, you also have two outs in the inning. Right. Hegeman can run. And you hope that Tolley doesn't make another play like he did earlier. That's right. Well, Hegeman has scuffled 0 for 2 with two strikeouts in this game. He was hitless on Saturday in the last game against Baylor as well. Snapped a five game hitting streak. This one's down the third baseline, a beauty. Long throw is late. Base is loaded. What an absolutely perfect bunt by Josh Hageman. Took him a couple tries there to connect with one, but that is perfect. Motion on the base pass, third baseman's got to retreat to cover the bag. Too close to the line for Tolley to reach. And 
and that's what Jordan Bishop's Bearcats are going to do to you. Kirk Sarlos going out and having that meeting himself. Usually it's the pitching coach Dave Lawn who makes the first visit, but Sarlos taking matters into his own hands, maybe getting the uh, Major League vet extension there on that mound visit. Outside corner strike to Mitchell. Right at him with fastballs. He's not going to change his M.O. whether or not he's in trouble or not. Well, the two things you don't want here, or three things really, pop out to the infield, ground ball double play, and a strikeout. Just find a way to get this ball in play and bring across a run. That's Mitchell's job. Chase is there. That ball took off. Some late arm side life. Looked like it had a little sink to it. Not what Mitchell's looking for when all of most of his other fastballs have been having that riding motion up in the zone. That one kind of took off. One and two. Mitchell fouls it off. Somebody has to get that baseball. <laughs> right between home plate and the pitcher's mound. Cold day like today, nobody wanted to grease those legs up and go get it. Everybody's in their coziest position in the dugout. <laughs> Big pitch, Peyton Tolley. Mitchell staying alive. Well, Mitchell knows a thing or two about these big pitching moments. He is one of the back end arms for Cincinnati. A couple of saves this year. So he can sympathize with what Peyton Tolley is doing on the mound or trying to do on the mound. 2 2 again. It's a bunt. Dropping everyone by surprise, and Tolley off the mound makes another great play. The glove flip force for the second out. Great composure, great play, executes the glove flip. Sometimes the ball can get stuck in your glove. You can kind of flip it high. Cool as ice out there. Wow. Keeps the tying run off the board. Big time, big time play. And just in time. So the two strike bunt bid for Mitchell almost worked out. And called a ball to Sefcik to open up his at bat. Felt like that bunt kind of took everybody by surprise, but Tolley just did a great job to hop off that mound and react. I certainly was not expecting a bunt there. That's the second great play he's made off the mound, and now he's one out away from getting through six scoreless. Pitch number 100 coming up here. And he would love to get out of this inning clean. Helps himself out with that play, but he's behind again. He's one ball away from walking in a run. Lost a tick or so on that fastball, more in the 89-91 range. Losing it arm side a bit. And we could tell early on that was his miss, but a little more so as he gets deeper into this game. That one at 89 for Tolley. Well, the velo starting to falter. This is far and away his most laborious inning. That forces in a run. Cincinnati ties it on a bases loaded walk. Totally wanted that one. That pitch is right there, but catcher set up on the inner half and reaching forward across the plate, you're usually not going to get that one. If he was set up right there, he would have gotten that call. But it's a game of inches, as they say, and the Bearcats take advantage. So Cross scores from third. First pitch swinging. Jesse lofts it foul ball out of play. 
Oh, Hegeman now at third, Mitchell at second. Sefcik at first. He picks up the run batted in, his eighth of the year. There's that slider that he has not gone to much today. That's the best one I've seen him throw. That had some serious bite and sweep to it. Maybe that's a pitch he can ride here to get through this sixth inning. Something new. Off the hands, up the middle, base hit. Tolley threw his glove trying to knock it down. Throw from center is late. Two runs score. And the Bearcats have a 3-1 lead. After not getting a hit until this inning, they've struck for three. He went back to the fastball, and Hunter Jesse does not miss it. Turns it around, right back up the middle. That's a veteran hitter having a really good approach there. As we touched on, highest batting average in conference play, and Hunter Jesse continues to hit. Big time for the Bearcats. That's going to end the day for Peyton Tolley. Next inning for Cincinnati. But there were some cracks in the surface. Walks will kill you. Tolley walked four today. And the Bearcats made him pay. They, they did what they do with small ball, with moving the runner, putting pressure on with bunts. Four walks might not sound like a ton, but for your Peyton Tolleys of, of the world, that's, that's not what he expects out of himself. And with this Bearcats offense, all kinds of pressure, that was all they needed to put a chink in the armor, as you said. One and one on Jones. Abel comes at you with a different look. His fastball is not quite going to ride in the zone. It's going to be more of that sinker action, much less extension. Well, what do you make of this delivery, too? It's kind of a, a herky-jerky with the leg kick and then really throws across his body, more so than Tolley did. Yeah, we thought Tolley was cross-firing. Abel really stepping over there a good six inches at least towards that first base side and then coming with that sinker and that slider combo. On the ground, past the glove, into center. Sefcik trying to score. He will. RBI single, Alec Jones. 4-1 Bearcats. Pretty good pitch right on the outside corner. Jones does a really nice job. Nice balanced swing right up the middle. The Bearcats have done a lot of that today. They haven't been crushing the ball, hitting home runs in the gap. They've just been taking advantage of free bases and then getting singles through the infield. It's now hits in four consecutive games for Jones. We he talked about how he was, exactly. We talked about how he was seeing the ball better. One for three day. Abelt deals to Pearson. Flies it to right towards the line. Myers racing over. And he's got it for the final out. But the damage done. Four runs on three hits. He's at the plate on the mound or flipping his glove. And he made some great defensive plays on the mound today. It wouldn't have surprised either of us if he made that play too. But it wasn't meant to be. He's tagged for four runs. Abelt had to finish off the sixth. And now Cincinnati has a 4-1 lead in the top of the seventh inning. Bowen Robinson Myers for the Horned Frogs. And Bowen down nothing at two. Seth Lowe came into this game in the top of the fourth inning. He's allowed one run since. Struck out a couple. Wanted that one. Pitcher's pitch missed away. Doing a good job working that fastball to his glove side, outside to righties, and then breaking the slider and the cutter off of that. Just like last week when Garula before Logue at Baylor. Looking like a good one-two punch. This is a TCU team that has just struggled to hit over the last month, month plus. 
Talked about it with the run support for Tolley. Talked about their splits each month. Slicing fly ball, right center field, and it goes towards Hegeman. One gone. Any way you slice it, they just haven't had a guy step up and produce a lot of runs. You've seen Cross for the Bearcats. TCU just needs somebody to step up and give this offense a bit of a jolt. I mean, they're taking pretty good at bats, getting some hits. Just haven't been able to string them together. Hey, get it moving. Here you go. Ryder Robinson bats. He has a double in this game. He has scored the only run for TCU. Going back to that cutter again from Seth Logue, 86. Getting him off the fastball, works that one middle out. Doing a good job mixing speeds here. Check swing up high, he goes around. Chased it. Two gone in the seventh. He gets his four runs, and this is the most confident we've seen him coming out in the top of the seventh. High heat. It's a really good sequence. Right fielder, number 13, Sam Myers. Gets him to go. Robinson knew it. I mean, that just does wonders for a pitcher, right? Get some run support. Absolutely. Four runs, you go out there. Good. Takes a lot of the pressure off. I feel like it can go both ways. You, know, you get some run support, and you think, oh, I can just you know, pitch to contact. and What you want to pitch to contact anyway, but you get lackadaisical with it. Next thing you know, the other team's offense comes back and starts to make their own run. But at the same time, you get a few runs, and it propels you on the mound knowing that you can pitch a little more free. Right. Talk about totally pitching fearless, whether or not he gets run support. I think a little cushion like this for Logue, it's, it's made him a little more fearless, going right at guys here and does that for anybody. That's laced up the middle, and Pearson has to play it on a hop. How about the day Myers has had? Two hits, made some nice plays in right. Nice job out of the nine hole. He's putting together really good at bats. Hitting the ball hard. Two base hits, as you said. If you're a TCU fan, this is a freshman that you're probably going to be seeing in the lineup for a few years to come here. Earning himself some more playing time. As we mentioned, he had not had a hit over the last week or so. Played a little bit more earlier in the year. A two-out base knock back to the top of the order for Brunson. He has accounted for the only run for TCU today. Drove in Ryder Robinson in the fifth inning. Traded places with doubles. Now a five-game hitting streak for the leadoff man for the Horn Frogs. Long hold and a late time. Granted by Perry Costello, very late. I love a good long hold. Veteran pitcher out there. Logue's not the quickest of the plate. He's got kind of a long, looping arm swing. Allows him to get some good velocity, but he's got to mix his timings if he wants to have a chance getting guys thrown out on stolen bases with holding his timing and things like that. Check over on Myers. Up and in. Brunson hit a home run on Tuesday against UT Arlington. It's the second time that the Horn Frogs had played UT Arlington out of the whack this season. One and one in midweeks. As we mentioned earlier, that was the lone loss in midweek games for TCU. UT Arlington, just one of many, many good teams in the state of Texas. Popped up over off of first. No play for Josh Cross. 
and Texas is loaded with them. Texas Longhorns, TCU, Texas Houston, Tech. Texas Tech, Dallas Baptist, UT Arlington. That last foul ball over in the TCU section, they've actually traveled pretty well. They did. They made some noise when TCU scored. There hasn't been much of it today. TCU came in hitting 228 in Big 12 play. They have four hits in six and two thirds innings today. They had just six hits on Tuesday. Oh, that'll sting. That got him right on the hand. Brunson gets plunked. And he'll be checked out by Danny Wheat, the athletic trainer. Ooh. Competitive pitch. Brunson starts to go around there. Second and first now for Maxwell. Dribbler up the line, tough play, cross off the bag. Logue is there. Seth Logue strands two horn frogs. Cincinnati Bearcats, as well as Joe Burrow, the king of Cincinnati. Wonder if one of those other special guests might be T. Swift herself. You know, there's a lot of rumor and speculation floating around. There has been nothing confirmed last that I heard. And trust me, I have absolutely zero insight on this. So I do not know. Uh, but that has certainly been a popular name. Some say she's had a, a pretty good year all around. I think any way you measure it, T. Swift has had a pretty good year. Yeah. I was talking to my girlfriend about going to see the New Heights podcast live. She was like, I don't care about going, but if Taylor Swift is there and we weren't there, <laughs> I'm going to be very upset. It's all about Taylor Swift. Well, right now it's all about Cincinnati and Loudon Brooks who strikes out for the first out in the seventh. Abelt stays in there after wrapping up the sixth and punches out his first man. Well executed fastball up with two strikes right by him. Great pitch. That sixth inning Cincinnati sent all nine men to the plate. So Brooks batting for consecutive innings leading off and goes down. Cross first pitch swinging and fouls it out of play. Eighth inning for TCU will feature the middle of the order, 3-4-5. So this game far from over. But this TCU offense has hit a roadblock the last few weeks. Similar script today. And it, it felt like, Zach, they were breaking out. I mean, that Houston series, they smoked the Cougars. Pitched really well, hit really well. It felt like they were turning that corner. And today, just nothing going again. They really did. That was the best weekend they've had in conference by far. And then you have a bit of a scuffle on Tuesday, UT Arlington. And you come in today, you got your guy Tolley on the mound, thinking that he's going to lead them to victory. Credit to the Bearcats offense. They stuck with it when they had absolutely nothing going for a while. They stuck with it, took a few walks, a couple timely base hits. And their pitching staff has really kept them in it. Garula and Logue have really done a great job settling in. Just on the outside corner, keeps crossing the batter's box. And if you're TCU pitching, you're saying, man, four runs, six innings? We're keeping the offense, you know, we're keeping our offense in a position to strike. TCU known for its pitching. Just like that, back-to-back -back Ks from Abelt. Abelt's got a great fastball, too. It's a little different than Tolley's, but these lefties at TCU's rolling out, coming right at you with fastballs. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Abel. And that is his final batter. Kirk Sarlo's going to make a change. Like we said, Abel was warming up when it was a 
one nothing game. Maybe coming in to salvage that. Didn't work out that way, but Sarlos maybe trying to save some bullets for the rest of the weekend. Bringing in Zach Morris, another southpaw. Coming in here for the Horn Frogs. In that other midweek game against UT Arlington. Went one inning scoreless for Morris. Had really good success at Arkansas over four years. And they just continue to roll out the lefties. Cross takes low. I feel like lefties in general, Zach, are at a premium in baseball, and TCU has gone totally A-belt, and now Morris, three in a row. They've got a whole stable full of good lefties. Oh, when Morris was at Arkansas, he pitched to a 4.77 ERA. Saved three games, 61 total appearances. Best year was as a junior, 2.31 ERA. That's in the SEC. Down the right field line, that'll tail out of play. Hits the railing and comes back in. That just shows the depth of TCU's pitching. A guy like this, you expect big things from him after his last few years, graduate student. And as you said, he hasn't found his footing yet. They're still pitching it really well. Leading the Big 12 in strikeouts, up there in ERA. The squad can really, really pitch. If, if, the, if the hitting comes around, I think they're going to have another great run. Ground ball to short. Silva eats that up. And that is the final out of the inning. Abel and Morris keep Cincinnati quiet in the seventh. And they weren't top of the conference year in, year out, so no surprise that they were picked towards the bottom of the Big 12. But Jordan Bischel has breathed some new life into this program. And they're looking like they can really compete in this conference. Well, Cincinnati went to just one regional in the American. That was in 2019. So it's been a while. Of course, still a lot of baseball to be played. But middle of the pack right now, if you're a Bearcats fan, that's about all you could ask for. Silva unloads on this out to left, but on a day like today, it's not going to travel very far. Jesse makes the grab. Anthony Silva today, 0 for 3. Silva put a good swing on it. Just, as you said, didn't really go anywhere. Wind not a huge factor, but the little wind that there is is blowing to right, not left. It's kind of a crosswind back towards first and then a little bit towards right. Nothing in one on burn. Nothing in two. In the Big 12, as we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast, Oklahoma has had a great start to the season. Houston was up there for a while, and then they kind of fell off a little bit. Exemplified by the sweep against TCU last weekend. Texas is up there. Kansas State has really turned around its season after the tough early non-conference. They were in the top 25 to begin the year and then fell out, and now they've rattled off wins in the Big 12. This is a conference where there's no weekends off. There's no series off. Every team you're going to play is going to have some dudes. And we've seen some shuffling in the standings, which really no surprise. There haven't been a ton of sweeps either. It's been a lot of one and two, two and ones, a lot of good baseball up and down this conference. Well, even some of the travel now too, Zach. The American, a little bit more consolidated. Imagine being on that trip, BYU to Orlando, Florida. Smashed left center field, hit a mile high, but only about a half mile long. Pearson makes the grab. Two gone. This is how the coaches poll expected things to shake out. TCU, the project, uh, projected favorite with Texas. 
Oklahoma State has had some good wins. They're right up there in the top five or six. Kansas State has rebounded. They're probably going to finish better than that fifth spot if they continue on the trend they're on. Oklahoma is certainly going to finish better than middle of the pack if they continue on that trend. UCF may be surprising some people as sure. well. 100%. Very competitive conference. Be interesting to see at the end of the year how many teams get into the NCAA tournament with that at large berth. Of course, you win the conference, you'll get in, but how many at larges are there? SEC and the Big 12 always usually representing in, in the regionals, and I think this year will be a lot of the same. A TCU's going to be an interesting case down the stretch because their pitching's going to keep them in a lot of games. If the offense turns it around, this is going to be a team that, you know, if they finish middle of the pack in the Big 12, you're not going to want to see them in the Big 12 tournament. No. It all comes down to pitching in, in tournaments like that, and they've certainly got the stable. They just can't hit. They cannot hit over the last couple of weeks. And Seth Logue is shot. We'll face Zach Morris again. Sun's peeking through. How about that? At long last. Warm up my friend Zach Siegel. Need your sunscreen here in a minute, buddy. Now Cincinnati has been hitting all season long. Jordan Bischel knew that the offense was going to carry this team. The pitching was going to be an issue. They haven't hit a ton today. Four runs on four hits, but they've hit in clutch spots. Josh Hegeman leads it off and takes outside. But overall this season, for the first year in the Big 12, Cincinnati is top five in a lot of very important offensive categories. Nestle. Slicing fly to left towards the line. Basir going over, and he makes the catch in the shadows. That stolen base number really sticks out at you. Leading the league in stolen bases and also hit batters. The hit batters ties right in with, if I could invent a category, I would say the Bearcats have the hardest 90s. That's been one of their real team identities. Somebody gets hit by a pitch, they get up slow, and then they sprint through the bag, firing everybody up. This offense is potent. Power, speed, everything you want. Well, the biggest question for Cincinnati coming into the season was would the pitching hold up enough to give the offense a chance? You know, if the offense scores you six, seven, eight runs a game, that should win you more games than not. But the pitching was so inexperienced and so untested at times. Had some injuries as well. Injuries that that was the biggest question. Would the offense score eight or nine runs and then the pitching give up nine or ten runs? At times that's been the case. Think back to that Coastal Carolina game early in the year when the Bearcats got the barn doors blown open. But for the most part, the offense and the pitching has supported one another. Off the hands, fouled off by Mitchell. Talk about the offense and the pitching. This guy right here, Christian Mitchell, he has been a real contributor on both sides of the ball. Coming into this game, hitting 293 on the mound. He's got 10 appearances, pitching at a two ERA. This guy's been so valuable for the Bearcats so far this year. Line drive out to left. Basir has another chance, but it falls in front that time. Base hit for Mitchell. Right on cue. Carson. His first hit of the day, and the fifth for Cincinnati. You got to wonder if TCU rolling out all these lefties in a row is letting the Bearcats get kind of comfortable seeing similar looks. Like they've they've had different arm slots and slightly different movement profiles, but typically you see you know left, right, left mixing up the look. Especially when the lineup is loaded with righties, they're kind of just catering to all these right-handed hitters in the lineup. Sefcik looking at a bunt, perhaps, takes a strike. Hey. 
Sefcik has walked twice, one of which brought in a run. At the time, it tied the game. Check it first. Morris keeping tabs on Mitchell. We talked about Sefcik being kind of lost in the shuffle a little bit with how deep this Bearcats lineup is and the rotation, but he takes really good at bats. Does a lot of the little things right. Not to mention he's hitting over 300. You gotta keep this guy in the lineup. I think that's what impresses me most about a guy like Sefcik, that you're in and out of the lineup, it's inconsistent time, and you still come in and produce. Really hard to do when you're not getting every day at bats. Not to say he's not getting a good, he's definitely getting a good amount of at bats, but it's been a bit inconsistent. Some of those control issues for Morris starting to present themselves. Three and one count. He's got good stuff. He's mixing fastball changeup mostly. Good dive on the changeup. Good life on the fastball. Just kind of losing it arm side. Cut and a miss. Count goes full. A luxury for sure for TCU to have three guys in a row running it up to the low to mid 90s from the left side. But that's just the Big 12. That's what the Bearcats are going to see moving from the American to the Big 12. You're going to see consistent arms through the whole bullpen like this. And good job by Morris working all the way back. Fell way behind and ends up punching out Sefcik. Good fastball, just beat him. Threw it right by him. Comes at a good time for Morris after the hit from Mitchell. Mitchell four of five and steals this year. Chopper wide of first foul for Hunter Jesse. Talk about the Bearcats putting it together little by little. They don't have an extra base hit today. Four runs all on some singles and some walks. It's been timely hitting. Four walks for TCU pitching. As you mentioned, the five singles. And some small ball with some bunts. Potential pickoff at first base here. Mitchell gets to second on the bad throw. So Morris had him leaning. Mitchell took off on first move, but TCU just can't keep the throw near the base. He had him, good lefty. Kind of balk move, but to Mitchell's credit, gets a good jump, finishes the play, and throws a bit offline. Carson Bowen just wide of the bag. Jesse has the big hit today. Big hit makes it sound like, as you mentioned, Zach, a three run home run or something like that. It was a two run single. Two run single. That's all Cincinnati's needed today. They added the bases loaded walk and the Alec Jones hit for some insurance. As the game's gone on, the Bearcats have just gotten more patient at the plate. It looked like early on. I mean, Tolley was just coming right at you. They couldn't be very patient, but now they're just kind of taking what TCU's pitchers give them, working deeper counts, just doing a much better job. Top of the ninth inning, TCU will have Boyers, Bowen, and Robinson, six, seven, eight in the lineup. They do not make many changes, so I would expect that to be the same three. Payoff pitch, Mitchell in scoring position. And it's fought off by Jesse. Veteran AB here from Hunter Jesse. 
seeing pitches, fighting them off, getting into a deep count. Doing a really nice job here. Three, two again. Jesse lets it hit him. It's off the forearm. Curtis Byrne trying to make the argument that Jesse leaned into it, but Perry Costello not buying it. Although they're going to have a meeting of the minds to talk about it. I don't think he leaned into it, but I think there's a reasonable argument that he did not try to get out of the way. He definitely didn't try to get out of the way. First base granted. Like we said, he, it didn't look like he leaned into it. It didn't look like he got out of the way. That's just kind of a different part of the game. Guys want to save their elbows before, but now with the Evo shields and things, don't necessarily have to get out of the way as much. Hey, hold on. Hey, hey, they look hey, like hey, gladiators going up there sometimes. We'll get a pinch runner here. So Jesse coming out. Landon Vitterick will run at first. First substitution other than a pitching change made by either team. So Jesse's day is done after a fly out, two run single, and two hit by pitches. Really productive day at the plate for Jesse. Had that big hit. Two hit by pitches is huge when base runners were hard to come by early in the game. Just off the outside edge to Jones. Jones is starting to see it well. He historically really likes left-handed hitters. He was a little behind on Tolley, but hit a ball really hard off of A-Belt. I wouldn't be surprised here if he times up Morris the way he's been looking at the plate lately. Back pick to second, and they got him. They got him at second. Nice design play there from TCU to pick off Mitchell. Run on a few hits since. Biggest thing with his outing today, no walks. Struck out four in four and two thirds. Brendan Garula, I'm sorry, four and one third. Brendan Garula went the first three and two thirds. Did not allow a run, struck out two on one hit. Hit a ton, right field and deep. That baby's out of here. Luke Boyers tries to start the comeback for TCU. That ball was crushed. Got a fastball right out of the heart of the plate. And he did not miss it. 107 off the bat. It was actually middle out. Pulled it. Bringing some life into that TCU bullpen over there. And now a pinch hitter for the Horn Frogs, Zach Wattis. So Boyer's his second home run of the year. And now a pinch hitter for Carson Bowen, who had been 0 for 3. Wattis has pop in his bat. He played against UT Arlington on Tuesday. His first career hit was his first career home run. TCU does have a tendency to come back late in games. Come back overall. They have been very good at Coming back from deficits. Really good changeup from Seth Logue there. Pulled the string on him. Nine come from behind wins. Two after trailing by six or more. That won't be the case today. But four, that bottom line's the big one. Four wins when trailing in the eighth or ninth inning. Wattis doesn't help the cause there. One gone in the ninth. Yeah, just under. 
Well, Kirk Sarlos goes to the pinch hitter to give that lefty-righty matchup, and then Seth Logue decides to throw arguably his two nastiest pitches of the day, back-to-back change-ups. Those were gross, Anthony. Fell right off the table. Back to that cutter on the inside there. Strike one on Robinson. Can TCU muster a couple more runs? Off the end of the bat, near third base. Long run, Carrington Cross into the slide. Just out of his range. Almost made another great play as he just missed a nice sliding basket catch there. Seth Logue's in control, 0-2. Almost. I go right back to that changeup. Worked the first time. Myers on deck. Two hits today. Cut and a miss. To the hard stuff upstairs. Hey, the right fielder, number Great pitch. Gets the freshman Robinson to swing right under it. His third strike out of the day at the plate. And Seth Logue is cruising. Six punch outs today. Six strikeouts, two runs, and now five innings of work. He tries to finish it off and get Myers to end the game. One and one. Top of the order looming on deck for TCU. <laughs> Off the end of the bat, little flare. Mitchell just over the glove. And Myers has his third hit to get it back to the top of the lineup for the Horn Frogs. Logue went back to that changeup, faded out of the zone. And Myers, he's seeing a beach ball today, takes that pitch off the plate, punches it the other way, his third hit of the day, keeping his team alive. And now we're back to the top of the order, exactly where TCU wants to be right now. Tying run at the plate. Brunson, three home runs. He tried to hit one there. Brunson one for two with an RBI double. Come on, get a move in. Right Maxwell on deck. Right. Just out. Lowe's got a lot of pitches he can toy with here. He's thrown four pitches today. Fastball cutter, change up slider. See what he goes with here. To, t to their probably best hitter. And it's through the left side, a base hit for Brunson. TCU has life in the ninth. Already one run in and now two on with two out. And the go ahead run coming up. The designated hitter, number 22, Logan Maxwell. Well, if there's one good feeling here for Cincinnati, Logan Maxwell does not have a home run, more of a contact-type hitter. And it feels like he's due, 0 for 4 on the day. Highest batting average on the team. Never say never with that home run. Kind of reminds me of that Reds game last week where the announcer said, Spencer Steer, no career grand slams, and then he hits one. Maxwell last year hit two home runs. After an 0 for 4 day, still 358, plenty capable. Bear 
Wildcats riding with Logue, and he's one strike away. Well, if he's been amped up after some regular old strikeouts in the fifth and sixth inning, imagine what he's going to do if he can put a stamp on this one. See if he goes back to that fastball. Up and away with the heater. This inning started with a Boyer's home run. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, now back-to-back -back singles. Seth Logue and his revival out of the bullpen. Misses again. Sticking with that fastball. It's been his strikeout pitch so far. Going that elevated heater, getting some swings right under it. Silva due up next. Has to run through Maxwell. Seth Logue at pitch 85 has held his velocity still 90-91, just as he was when he entered the game. I was just about to say, it feels like it's getting even harder. Slow it down and execute. A little extra mustard. A timeout. Jordan Bischel wants to talk it over. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. He looks confident with the fastball. That's been a strikeout pitch all day. I think he's got to stick with the high heat. Went to the change, and the count's full. Myers at second, Brunson at first, Maxwell the go-ahead run at the plate. 3-2, on the ground a third, backs up cross, long throw, in time. Hold your horses, they may want to look at it, but as of right now, Cincinnati has the win. That's it, call confirmed. Seth Lowe goes the final five and a third, and Cincinnati's on.